Breaking tonight, President Trump warns Iran, Iran threatens America. And moments ago, President Trump speaking to reporters after returning to Washington with strong words after Iraq votes to expel U.S. troops. The president saying, quote, We have an extraordinarily expensive air base that's there. It cost billions of dollars to build long before my time. We're not leaving unless they pay us back for it. If they do ask us to leave, if we don't do it in a very friendly basis, we will charge them sanctions like they've never seen before, ever. It'll make Iranian sanctions look somewhat tame. I think we can all agree, classic Trump there. Next quote. So, with Iraq, we've spent a lot of money in Iraq. I told you Iraq was the worst decision. Going into the Middle East was the worst decision ever made in the history of our country. Iraq, by the way, they didn't knock down the World Trade Center. That's been very nicely proven. But we went in and we're there and we're pulling out, pulling out of a lot of different areas. With Syria, I pulled out because I'm not going to guard his border. Why should I be guarding the border? They've got troops, let them guard. That border's been under siege for thousands of years. They've been fighting on that border. More in that vein from me later on, as you will see. We've got this and more covered for you with the latest news and the smartest analysis. In a moment, we'll go to former Marine and Intelligence Officer Congressman Mike Gallagher. There he is. Plus, here with me for the hour, Jason Chaffetz, Tommy Lauren and Katrina Pearson. How good is that? All right. Happy New Year, everyone, and welcome to The Next Revolution. I'm Steve Hilton, and this is the home of positive populism, pro-worker, pro-family, pro-community, and, of course, pro-America. Also in the show tonight, more good news on the economy, more embarrassment for Joe Biden. And in Looney Left, we bring you the strange death of the reasonable Democrat, how even the so-called moderates in the presidential race are way to the left, of anything we've seen before. But first, I want to lay out for you how I see the issues with this whole Iran situation. Over the past few days, we've heard a lot of superficial, simplistic and self-serving grandstanding from the usual suspects. Trump hating Democrats and their stooges in the ruling class state media have made complete fools of themselves with wildly inconsistent positions. Apart from one thing, of course, whatever Trump does is, by definition, wrong. One of their favorite talking points for days was that President Trump's action was unconstitutional, illegal, blah, blah, blah. Well, that argument was destroyed this morning by President Obama's Homeland Security Secretary, Jay Johnson. If you believe everything that our government is saying about General Soleimani, he was a lawful military objective. Mm -hmm. And uh, the president, under his constitutional authority as commander in chief, had ample domestic legal authority to, to take him out without an additional congressional authorization. Um, the, whether he was a terrorist mm -hmm. or a general in a military force that was engaged in armed attacks against our people, he was a lawful military objective. I suppose I should apologize for NBC's sound problems there, but you get the point. But the award for most humiliating idiocy of the week, probably goes to Democrat Senator Chris Murphy, who on Tuesday, after the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad was attacked, but before the Soleimani strike, said that President Trump had, quote, rendered America impotent, just hoping bad guys go away. But when that actually happened, when one of the bad guys, indeed one of the worst guys in the world, did, in fact, go away... As a direct result of President Trump's action, Murphy criticized it, literally complaining about the fact that Soleimani had been taken out. He wasn't the only one. Ever since Donald Trump won the election, his opponents have lost their minds and with it any ability to make a coherent argument. If Trump's for it, they're against it. Just look at their policy pirouettes on the Middle East, all of it driven by anti-Trump hate. When he pulled back from the Middle East, it was a disaster. Trump has broken America's solemn promise to those who sacrificed so much on our behalf. I'm tired of Trump wrapping himself in the flag in the morning, then abandoning our troops and our values by the afternoon. I would not have withdrawn the troops, and I would not have drawn the additional thousand troops who are in Iraq. Yesterday on the floor, 354 members voted in a bipartisan way to oppose the president's dangerous decision uh, in regard to Syria. Right. Got that? Getting out is... Dangerous, so dangerous. But wait, so is going in. The president's decision may add to an already dangerous and difficult situation 
in the Middle East. We're going to end up in an escalation, a military escalation around the world. We appear to be, without, by the way, I'd say, without congressional authorization, entering into another Middle East war. They have taken a step that moves us closer to war, a step that puts everyone at risk. They have no coherent position. They have no strategy. They just have more of what they gave us when they held the White House. Appeasement, weakness and establishment predictability. Exactly what kept us in these endless, costly, stupid wars. But we've also seen simplistic knee-jerk nonsense from the isolation nuts. What's Trump doing? He promised to get us out of wars, not into them. We shouldn't be intervening abroad. Focus on our problems back home. You know the script. It's easy enough to luxuriate in simplistic ideology and superficial slogans. But in the real world, an American president can't just disengage from the world for the very obvious reason that what happens in other countries can affect us here. That's why we care about trade deals, for example. They affect us here at home. And yes, that's why we care about projecting military power abroad. The question is not whether we should intervene internationally, but how. America first doesn't mean America alone, nor does it mean America stays at home. It means America's policies, domestic and foreign, should be determined by what's best for the American people. And the isolation nuts don't seem to understand that. They take a stand against any international action, even when it is in America's interest. Next, they'll want us out of the Olympics because it's a foreign competition. And speaking of international competition, the other bunch of usual suspects who've pooped off against the Soleimani strike are the Europeans. The British, the Germans and the French have all expressed their grave concerns and are calling for restraint. You bet they are. They're still trying to revive the rotten corpse of the Iran nuclear deal, which funneled billions of dollars directly to Qasem Soleimani to fund terror and mayhem throughout the Middle East. The British are now in a panic over their energy imports, sending Navy ships to guard tankers in the Gulf. But that's because they've allowed themselves to become dependent on energy imports. And unbelievably, despite estimates that fracking could help the UK towards energy independence, the British government has just banned it. And that neatly brings us to the real story here. As we reported a few weeks ago, for the first time in history, thanks to President Trump's pro-enterprise agenda, America has just become a net exporter of oil and gas. The truth is that oil has been the driving force for the West's involvement in the Middle East for over a century. It drove British imperialism, then American imperialism, and the inevitable resentments that followed. Driven by the energy imperative, the West has tried to remake and reshape the Middle East, creating nothing but a costly, bloody, disastrous mess. Along the way, the establishment in Washington has cashed in with some of the most obscene corruption of the modern era. Vice President Dick Cheney pushing a catastrophic invasion that put billions of dollars into the pockets of his former company, Halliburton. Vice President Joe Biden's brother cashing in too, just like so many in the swamp, in the military industrial complex, in the establishment, who are addicted to endless war in the Middle East. Now we see the same geniuses in the swamp, think tanks and institutes for strategic whatever, gravely expressing their concerns about how President Trump's actions will hamper the prospects for Middle East peace or the fight against ISIS or some other illusory goal. What planet are they on? There are no prospects for Middle East peace as long as we are there. We're never going to defeat the ideology of Islamist terror as long as all these countries are basket cases. And one of the main reasons they're basket cases is that our preposterous foreign policy establishment with monumental arrogance have treated the Middle East like some chess game played out in the boardrooms of Washington and London. They are a joke. Nothing they've ever proposed has ever worked. Everything has failed. The West's involvement in the Middle East has been a disaster from the start. And finally, with President Trump, America is in a position to bring it to an end. We don't need their oil and we don't need their problems. Finally, we have a US president who gets that and wants to get out. That doesn't mean doing nothing. It means intervening only in ways that help America. It means responding to attacks on Americans disproportionately as a deterrent just as we saw this week, it means pulling out of missions that are doomed to failure, as we saw the other month with Syria. 
and it means finally accepting that it's not our job to fix the Middle East from afar, that trying to do so has infantilized the whole region and that the best thing Americans can do to put the Middle East on a path that leads to more democracy, less terrorism, human rights and economic growth is to get the hell out of there while showing an absolutely crystal clear determination to defend American interests with force wherever they are threatened. The real threat to America is not Iran or anything else coming out of the Middle East, but China. The real strength of America is always underwritten by a strong economy, and that must always be the priority. I believe President Trump understands that, and if he sticks to that strategy, he will have our support. All right, tell me what you think, at Steve Hilton X and at NextRev FNC.